Has this ever happened to you? You're playing 360 with your bros, but you can't play right cause the thumbsticks are all screwed up. Not anymore. Introducing... This educational audio visual experience addressing this global health issue and concern. So I use the Xbox 360 controller a lot, despite not actually playing much Xbox 360. Thanks to heavy integration from Microsoft in Windows, the 360 controller has actually become the gold standard of controllers on the PC, so much so that many gamepads today actually more or less emulate it through its accompanying API X input. As a result, it's become my go-to gamepad for playing, of course, PC games, but also a plethora of other games through emulation. Basically, this thing sees a lot of action. But all that thumb friction has worn down the thumbsticks into sad, flat, melty shadows of their former selves. I've seen this happen before on other people's controllers too. I mean, what can you expect from so much... rubbing? And it's not just an aesthetic problem either. What used to be grippy surfaces have become smooth and slippery. Here everything is soft. And smooth. As you can imagine, this makes it easy for my thumbs to slide off during heated gaming moments. They're also kind of slimy. I'm not sure if that's the material continuing to disintegrate or years of my gross skin oil caked on, maybe both. But either way, I decided it was finally time to address it. And we're in luck. Turns out factories in China continue to pump out replacement parts in all sorts of styles, materials, and colors. Clearly my idea is not all that original, but hey, if we're going to replace them, we may as well do it in style. I decided to buy a pack of several colours to play around with. For 20 thumbsticks, that is 10 full replacements in total, I paid a measly $5.69. I can almost feel the exhausted factory worker misery. With these, I could obviously swap out for equivalent black thumbsticks, or grey ones that were used on the older 360 controllers, both black and white, but I was actually curious what these other colours would look like. Black and red might look quite spiffy. Anyways, enough talk, let's start taking this apart. Or at least, that's what I wanted to do. The controller uses Torx T8 screws, which I have a screwdriver for, but only in the form of this head replaceable screwdriver, and it's just too thick to fit in these tight holes. <laughs> Happens all the time. So I had to buy a new screwdriver with a more traditional form factor specifically for this project. Thanks Microsoft, but hey, I guess now I can start my lifelong dream business of taking apart Xbox 360 controllers. There are six screws that are visible on the back, but much like the screws on the OG Xbox, it's a trap. there's actually a seventh screw hidden behind a sticker. And while it looks like it's the big one and even feels like it has a hole behind it, it's actually this much smaller one. Fortunately, it's not hard to peel up, but I did end up using needle nose pliers because there's not a lot of room for fingers. I guess this voids your warranty or something, but whatever, who uses that anyway? After that, the back should pop right off. Ew, it's all naked and sh. Now, just FYI, the two vibration motors are actually not held in with anything and fall out very easily. To reduce strain on the wires, I thought it was best to unplug them and put them aside. But if you do this, remember which one's which because they are not the same. One's a small weight for light vibrations, and the other's a large weight for HEAVY RUMBLING. You can now take the main board out. It's not actually screwed down, it's actually just kind of clicked in place and will need a little bit of encouragement to pop out. And here we are with a familiar sight to anyone who's taken a controller apart before. Rubber caps, plastic blob buttons, nothing new here. But I will say, I'm glad it's fairly clean inside, especially since I'm making a YouTube video about it. I actually expected much worse because I've taken apart controllers with brown goo in every crevice imaginable. The kind that looks like they dip their hands in Nutella and wipe their ass before every gaming session. Anyway, it's time to replace these joysticks, which is actually super easy. You literally just lift them off. Yep, they're barely even stuck on because the casing usually keeps it locked in place. So here we are, the moment of truth. Time to install our new thumbsticks. But I did have a realization at this point that it wasn't just the thumbsticks that were grey on those older controller models, it was also the D-pad, which I kind of didn't think about. So any colour change I make might look a little mismatched with the D-pad. But, you know, whatever. Let's try it anyway and see how it looks. Time to pop some red thumbsticks on! Well, that was easy. But to really see how this looks, we'll need to put the board back in and look at it as a whole.
All right, finally, let's take a look at the end result. You know, it actually doesn't look half bad, but I think I was right. It would look a lot more consistent if the D-pad was red too. Weirdly, there didn't seem to be quite as much variety when it came to D-pads online. But hey, I still like the thumbsticks, and maybe I'll keep an eye out if it really starts to bother me. I will say it feels great. It feels like new, I guess because some of it technically is. And hey, while I'm here, let's see how the other colors look too. Now they did actually advertise a green thumbstick, but ran out of stock after I bought it, so I just got more of the other colors. But here's my artist's rendition of what the green thumbsticks would have looked like. And also what white thumbsticks might look like, because I thought it might look a little interesting. I think I'll stick with the red, but I'd be interested to hear in the comments which ones you guys like the most. But I will do one last thing before buttoning it up. While it isn't that dirty, there was some, uh, skin residue that had built up around the sides. I decided to give all the plastic a good clean in some warm, soapy water. I was wary about soaking the back piece with all of its stickers, so I decided to just give it a wipe down manually. Once everything had dried, it was time to reassemble. Nothing all that complicated, and again, it really does feel like new. So I'm actually pretty happy with this overall. I do wonder if the third party parts are less durable and are gonna wear out faster, but it's not exactly like I'm gonna run out anytime soon. So hey, if this looked interesting, I'd say give it a try. As long as you've got a screwdriver that fits, it's really quite easy to make your controller feel new again. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.